When you look at this picture, you probably just see a boring picture of a rose. I took it about a decade ago. I was on my very first date with Chelsea. We took a walk through a park and then suddenly it rained. We found shelter, we waited the storm out, and then we took a walk through a little rose garden. And this was definitely the most beautiful rose of them all, made particularly beautiful because it had just rained and so it had all these little drops all over it. Despite my nerdiness and despite me carrying around a Canon 5D, Chelsea agreed to go on a second date with me and before that second date, I made this 8x10 print, framed it, and gave it to her as a gift. And more than 10 years later, here it is on the wall. It means something important to me. And that's really the magic of photography, right? I was there in a moment and I managed to capture something that a decade later would instantly bring me back to that moment every time I saw it and remind me of the journey that we've been on. But I wanted to make a print maybe 20 by 30 as a gift for Chelsea and could I do that? Okay, this is where the feelings end and the science starts to come in. So in this video, I'm going to answer some really common questions like how many megapixels do you need to make a great 8x10 print? Can your iPhone do it? And if you go bigger, 16x20, 32x40, 64x80, how many megapixels do you need? At what point do more megapixels not matter anymore? What point are you running into the limits of the lens sharpness or diffraction? And is there any point at all in getting a high megapixel camera unless you plan to make massive, massive prints? There's only one way to find out and that's to use real human beings in a blind test. So that's what I did. To test this, I captured a boring studio scene with four different cameras. The first, of course, the most popular camera in the world, an iPhone. This will help me answer the question of whether or not your smartphone can really take decent prints and whether you really benefit by buying a full camera. A step up from that, the Sony a7 III with the 16 to 35 f2.8 G Master zoom lens. This has 24 megapixels, a big jump from the 12 megapixels in the iPhone. One more step up from that is the 60 megapixel brand new Sony A7R4. And that A7R4 is also capable of producing amazing 240 megapixel images in a special mode that requires a tripod and everything to be still in the scene. But nonetheless, it will help us answer the question of whether we will even see any benefit at all from those extra megapixels. Let's get to the results. People always say that eight megapixels is plenty to take a usable eight by 10 image. Is that true? Yeah, it seems like it's pretty much true. Even the iPhone produced an image that all of my blind study participants said was totally acceptable, that they would be completely happy with. And this is great news. All of us are sometimes a smartphone shooter. Sometimes you pull it out for those moments when a real camera can't do it. So if you only shoot eight by 10, does that mean there's no point in using a bigger camera like the A7 Mark III? Almost everybody said the image shot with the A7 Mark III was sharper than the iPhone. The iPhone picture was printed at 300 178 pixels per inch, while the a7 Mark III image was printed at 500 pixels per inch. But people say you can't see more than 300 dots per inch at your minimum focusing distance for your human eyes. Myth busted. You might not be able to perceive more than 300 dots per inch in a print like this, but pixels per inch doesn't directly translate to dots per inch because, of course, Lenses are never optically perfect, and that Sony G Master lens is a lot better than this tiny little lens on the back of my iPhone. Big shocker, a $2,000 camera makes a better looking picture than an iPhone, but what if you upgraded to a $3,500 60 megapixel camera? Surely those extra megapixels wouldn't make any difference in an 8x10 print. To most people, yeah, it didn't make any difference at all. But a little less than half of the people in my study thought that the 60 megapixel picture was noticeably sharper than the 24 megapixel picture. I don't tell them which is which. Human vision varies. And what we can learn from this is that some people won't notice a difference while others will. But wait, if most people couldn't see a difference going to 60 megapixels, 240 megapixels is definitely a waste for an 8x10 print, right? Well, I'm not saying it would be worth it to you to upgrade just for 8x10 prints, but two of my blind study participants noticed that the 240 megapixel image was sharper than the 60 megapixel image. 
I personally could not see a difference, but two keen-eyed people picked that image out. So yeah, you actually can see a difference. So yeah, even jumping from 600 pixels per inch at 60 megapixels to 1200 pixels per inch at 240 megapixels, some people could notice the difference. How could that possibly be? How could all those pixels not have reached the level where the human eye is unable to perceive it? And the answer is not every pixel is created equally. The pixels in the iPhone are behind a crappy smartphone lens. The pixels in the Sony a7 III are behind a good lens, but they're behind an anti-aliasing filter which camera manufacturers put there to reduce color artifacts, but it also significantly reduces sharpness. Those 60 standard megapixels from the Sony a7 R4 throw off that AA filter and so increase the sharpness more than just the increase in megapixels. And when we step up to the 240 megapixel images, we have to use a special stacking technique that eliminates the negative effects of the bare filter that sits on top of just about every sensor ever made. Okay, that's pretty nerdy. You don't have to know all of that stuff, but if you're curious about it, watch my video on color where I talk about how that stuff works. Let's step up to a 16 by 20 image. Okay, you might have noticed that this picture is the same size as the last picture. This is not 16 by 20. This is 8 by 10. I didn't want to create increasingly bigger and bigger prints up to 80 inches across. So what I did was I just cropped the image in half and then printed it at 8 by 10, thus giving us the exact same density of image. This is basically just a crop of a 16 by 20 image, but that's plenty for my blind study participants to be able to determine whether or not the image was sharper. And what did they find? The iPhone image was complete garbage. Absolutely nobody said the iPhone image was acceptable, printed at 16 by 20. So it's out of the competition completely. The A7 Mark III image, almost everybody said it was acceptable. A 24 megapixel picture printed at 16 by 20 was fine for most people. But I had one person who said they wouldn't use the picture. That particular person, a non-photographer, apparently has a really keen eye and really high standards. She has my daughter though, so maybe she's a pixel peeper. Do we see any benefit by upgrading to a 60 megapixel sensor? The answer is yes. Just about all the study participants were able to pick the 60 megapixel image out as being the sharper one. And jumping up to 240 megapixels, again, just about everybody could see that it was the sharper image compared to both the 60 megapixel picture and the 240 megapixel picture. At 16 by 20, even going to 240 megapixels is not overkill. You don't need to go that far, but the megapixels aren't wasted if you do. Before we go into the results for 32 by 40 inch prints, let's talk about how big you actually want to print. This is a small space between two doorways and an eight by 10 print. Matted, it looks small. It looks silly, right? This wall is mostly just empty. Eight by 10 prints are good for your desk, but eight by 10 prints are not wall art. Let me get a couple pictures. This is Chelsea's picture of our daughter. It's about 24 inches tall to put things into perspective. And even in this space, it feels a little small. I would definitely want it to be printed a little bit bigger or put in a frame with a whole lot of matting. Let me get a 20 by 30 print. This wildlife shot from a 50 megapixel 5DSR fills the space pretty good without overcrowding it too much. And the detail on it is great. You can explore it, you can look close up, and that's what people do when they see this image. They start to notice details about a cardinal that they've never seen before, like the little nodules around the eye and the texture of the feathers. But you know what? Even at 50 megapixels and a 20 by 30 inch print, it could definitely be sharper. It looks great from a distance. If you stand far enough back, any picture looks fine. I've shot eight megapixel billboards and they looked great from your car. But if it's the type of picture that people might walk up to and explore the details of like this one, more megapixels is definitely better. And even with a 50 megapixel camera, printing at 20 by 30 was definitely pushing it. So let's talk about 32 by 40. These are very big prints, but not bigger than most art pieces you would see in a fine art gallery, right? When people buy works of art, they need something to fill up the spaces on their houses. People who are buying these sorts of fine art prints, they have a little bit of extra money. Their house is probably a little bit bigger and they have big walls. Little eight by 10 prints end up looking really silly there. And 
And those are some good reasons to print big. Let me show you the 32 by 40 picture. This is an eight by 10 crop from the 32 by 40 picture. And this is the original picture printed at eight by 10. You can see I'm cropping out this little section here. So just imagine that this is about three and a half feet wide. What we found was nobody found the A7 Mark III pictures to be acceptable anymore. Even at just 40 inches, not a massive print, but a big print. 24 megapixels at that size is 125 pixels per inch, but 60 megapixels is 200 pixels per inch. So what did people think of the 200 PPI? They were torn. Most people said the 60 megapixel image printed at 40 inches wide was acceptable. But a couple of people said, no, it's starting to get blurry. If I was gonna print it this big, I would need it to be a little bit sharper or they would have just simply drawn the line and just printed it smaller. At that point, even 60 megapixels is limiting you from making a picture that will be acceptable to some portion of your audience. How about 240 megapixels? How does that look at 40 inches across? Well, we're at 400 pixels per inch and every single participant found it to be sharp enough. They would be happy with a 40 inch print. And that does tell us something. That means we're not running into artificial limitations as we print bigger and bigger and bigger. It means the lens is not ruining our sharpness. It means diffraction isn't wasting those extra megapixels. It means, yes, in the future, we should be able to get 240 megapixel images without these crazy stacking techniques, and we will still benefit for it. It means this future megapixel war could actually have a realizable benefit in the form of more beautiful art. But let's go really big, 64 by 80. And I've never made an 80 inch print, but I've gotten close. Come with me. This is a 50 inch print and it wows people when they see it. It really moves people because big prints have an impact that you cannot get with an eight by 10. If you love this particular print, I'm doing a very limited run of just 10 prints, exactly like this in this beautiful handmade framing on this gorgeous glass print. Check out my portfolio website, northofphotography.com if you wanna be one of the 10 people on the planet with this particular image. If you're curious, this is what the iPhone picture looked like blown up to 80 inches. It looks like garbage. This is the A7 Mark III image. Everyone agreed it was garbage and completely unusable. This is the standard 60 megapixel image from the A7 Mark IV. It's okay, but everyone agreed it was not good enough. And this is 240 megapixels stretched to an equivalent of 80 inches wide. It's only 200 pixels per inch at this point. Most people agreed that it was oh, borderline. They liked it. Yes, we're running up against 200 pixels per inch, which we decided was borderline before, but also I suspect we're running up against the limits of the lens. Still, I feel confident at normal viewing distances for an 80 inch print, people would be happy with this. So can you print a 240 megapixel image 80 inches wide? Yeah, it seems like you can, and I hope to do it soon because my goal as a photographer is not to sell people a bunch of eight by 10 prints, but rather to one day have an exhibit where I have big wall size prints like the masters have, like Ansel Adams, and maybe I'll never get there, but I'm not going to stop trying. So to answer your questions, do you need 240 megapixels for your Instagram page? No, definitely not. Do you need it for an eight by 10 print? No. Are you printing 80 inches wide right now? No, probably not. But think ahead. What will you in 10 years from now want to do with the images that you see today? What about 50 years from now? I have a dog who's 15 years old now and we go to the beach almost every day. One of those days is gonna be the last day we go to the beach together and the last picture I took of her will be the last picture I ever take of her. What if someday I decide I want to remember her by making a big print? I will regret not spending a little bit of extra money if I have that money in order to improve the quality of those images. Do your future self a favor. Think about how important these memories will be decades from now when you look back on the first date with the woman that you married and how you might want to use that image. Because right now, I wish that picture could have been 
sharp enough that I could make a big, beautiful print for Chelsea, and I can't do it. I tried, and it just doesn't blow up well. So, it will be an 8x10 print, and I hope when we are 80 and even our daughter is old, that we will still have that print on the wall. But from this point forward, I'm going to put a little more effort into making my pictures future-proof, and I know I'll thank myself. If you'd like to learn more about creating stunning images, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, which has over 14 hours of video and free updates built into it. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's completely free, and click the notification bell. And together, we'll keep learning photography for the reasons that make photography so important.